Andre Karpathy recently spoke at CVPR 2021, which is a virtual conference on computer vision and pattern recognition. At this conference, he shared a multitude of useful insights revealing how and why Tesla is going all in on vision for their full self-driving software. Let's dive into all the details. I'm Jonathan, and this is CleanerWatt. Now, when it comes to developing full self-driving software, Tesla is definitely a pioneer in this particular field. And while it might be taking longer than they initially would have hoped to develop a truly driverless vehicle, Tesla is making some seriously good progress in this particular aspect. And I believe with some of the insights that we got from Andre Carpathy's recent conference speech, we have some good insights into the details around Tesla's progress. Tesla was already one of the only major companies working on full self-driving cars that did not use LiDAR. And now they have taken that a step further by no longer including radar sensors on the new Model 3s and Model Ys manufactured for the North American market. So when it comes to the why Tesla is ditching radar and the how this is possible, I believe Andre Karpathy's speech at the CVPR 2021 conference definitely gives us some serious insight into the reasons for this switch away from radar. So without further ado, let's dive into the details. The first reason that I'd like to cover really does a great job to both explain the why and the how Tesla is moving away from radar sensors. And in this particular presentation, Andre mentioned that the data, the quality of data that they're getting from cameras right now is better than that of the data they were getting from their radar sensors. Here's how Andre described it in his own words. The vision system that we have been building over the last few years has been getting so incredibly good that it's kind of leaving a lot of the other sensors in the dust. He also went on to mention that the cameras are doing most of the heavy lifting in terms of the perception that you see in the car. Later on, he added, it has gotten to the point where we can start removing other sensors because they are becoming these crutches that you start to not really need at all. In simple terms, what Andre is trying to illustrate is the fact that Tesla's ability to perceive the world around them with cameras only in their vehicles has gotten so good that they no longer need the crutch of radar. And this example makes a lot of sense because you can think about maybe a situation where someone breaks their leg and of course they are given crutches to get around with. However, once the leg is healed and the leg is strong, the bone is strong once again, they no longer need the crutches. And Tesla is basically saying they no longer need the crutch of radar because their camera vision is so good now. When it comes to a direct comparison on how much better the data from their cameras is compared to the data that they're getting from the radar sensors, Andre mentioned, vision is getting to the point where the sensor is like 100x better than say radar. Then if you have a sensor that is dominating the other sensor and so much better, then the other sensor is actually holding you back and is starting to attribute noise. Andrea also mentioned the fact that accurate range finding or depth and velocity perception is not only possible with Tesla Vision, but it is now so accurate that radar data is no longer needed in their sensor suite. As they were developing what they call Tesla Vision, which simply describes their use of cameras only to perceive the world around them in their vehicles, as they were developing this, they definitely needed radar as a backup sensor and also to help test and validate the predictions they were making with their camera-based vision system. However, now Tesla Vision has progressed beyond needing radar and the crutches have been removed. He also mentioned near the end of the video that this vision capability is possible due to the vast amounts of diverse data that Tesla is able to capture from their growing fleet of cars. This really leads us into the second reason that I'd like to cover, and this talks more about the why Tesla is ditching radar and less about the how Tesla is ditching radar. This is all about the problem of sensor fusion. To express this point, Andre referenced a recent Elon tweet that said, when radar and vision disagree, which one do you believe? Vision has much more precision, so better to double down on vision than to do sensor fusion. And when you think about it, this does seem to make complete sense, doesn't it? In my opinion, it does make sense to focus in on the sensor that's doing all the heavy lifting and providing the better data and removing the extraneous sensor, the radar sensor, that is really contributing noise. Now, there is a valid argument that many will bring up about sensor redundancy being necessary for safety. However, redundancy from an inferior sensor may not really be that helpful in the long run. 
Also, Tesla has redundancy of a different kind built into their cars. Their full self-driving computer has built-in redundancy on the processing end, and Tesla has multiple cameras all around the car, which also provides some redundancy. Another added benefit of removing radar sensors from Tesla's vehicles is that it appears like it's solved the problem of phantom braking. Andre talked about scenarios like, say, going under a bridge, which in the past would confuse a radar sensor, and this led to unnecessary or phantom braking. Tesla's new camera-only based approach seems to solve this problem, and phantom braking should no longer be an issue. The next reason that I'd like to discuss, and one that Andre mentioned in this particular video, is one that would be easy to overlook as not being all that important, but it's actually a lot more important than you might think, and this is the issue of focus. Being able to focus in on cameras only and not having to worry about focusing on, on data that comes from radar sensors or, in other people's cases, LiDAR sensors. Tesla has a very talented but somewhat small group of engineers currently working on the very difficult task of developing a truly safe, full self-driving car. And as many companies have figured out in the past and are starting to figure out now, this is a really difficult thing to do. To take an engineer's focus away from camera-based vision and waste time on radar data, which according to Andre is inferior to camera vision data, seems kind of silly. It seems to make more sense to give your entire focus to the superior sensor suite, which in the end I believe will be the key to Tesla's success, and in this case, putting all their sensor eggs in one basket appears like the right thing to do. The next aspect that I'd like to discuss really isn't so much a reason why or how Tesla removed radar from their vehicles, but more it dives into a side byproduct or a benefit of removing radar from their vehicles, and this comes down to the scalability of Tesla's full self-driving software and hardware. Sensor cost definitely matters when it comes to the affordability and scalability of a full self-driving fleet of cars. According to a Mobileye presentation I recently watched, LiDAR sensors cost around 10 times as much as radar sensors do, and they made it clear that LiDAR sensors are unlikely to drastically come down in cost. And Mobileye should know about the cost of LiDAR because they are currently owned by Intel and are developing their own LiDAR sensors in-house. Tesla already had a huge cost benefit by not relying on expensive LiDAR sensors, and now they are taking this to the next level. When you compare the cost of a camera to, say, a radar sensor, cameras definitely have a huge cost advantage, and in a commoditized market, which one day full self-driving software will be more of a commodity in the coming future, every penny matters. So if Tesla has a system that requires less expensive sensors and they've done all the hard work on the back end that makes it very cheap on the hardware end to implement, this is going to make their product the most affordable and it's going to give them a huge competitive advantage if they choose to license this out in the future. Unless the cost of LiDAR is able to come down drastically, LiDAR-based solutions could be too expensive for non-commercial consumer markets. On the other hand, it appears like Tesla's cars will be more affordable as consumer vehicles and will allow full self-driving to be within reach of the masses for personal transportation. Moving on to reason five why Tesla is moving away from radar in their vehicles really comes down to really a core reason that Tesla didn't use LiDAR as well. Andre mentioned something that I've talked about in the past and that he and Elon have talked about in the past, but this is the simple fact that if humans can drive with vision alone, then a car with cameras all around the vehicle should be able to drive itself with vision alone as well. At the beginning of this presentation, Andre put up a slide to really illustrate why he believes a computer driving a vehicle is going to be very superior to a human, and in many ways it already is, but he gave an example of a two-ton car traveling at around 80 miles per hour, while a human driver has a reaction latency of around 250 milliseconds, which is a quarter of a second. A computer, on the other hand, has reaction latency of less than 100 milliseconds, which means less than one-tenth of a second. In simple terms, what he's illustrating here is the fact that computers have the ability to process and react much quicker than humans and thus should be able to avoid more issues, more accidents, and other hazardous things on the road. He also mentioned that a human has to turn his head and use mirrors to have situational awareness, whereas a Tesla vehicle with cameras all around the car has 360 degree awareness. He also mentioned that humans are very prone to distractions like checking their phone, checking Instagram for instance, whereas computers are fully attentive. 
So the result of all this is that although humans can drive remarkably well with the limited amount of data that they have with vision, their own depth perception, they still get into a lot of accidents. Whereas computer with camera based vision should be able to avoid a lot more accidents and thus drive safer. So now that we've talked about the why and the how of Tesla's moving away from radar to camera based vision alone, I'd like to move over and really address a question and something that always comes up. And that is how will Tesla's vision based system, camera vision based system be able to handle adverse weather situations? In this presentation, Andre showed three examples of Tesla navigating hazardous road situations without problem with just camera-based vision. The first one involved debris coming at the car. The second example was a dust cloud that occluded the car's vision. And the third was driving on a snowy road. And this was just three simple examples that Andre used to illustrate how they can drive in adverse situations. But I'm sure Tesla is improving this even more and more. And also it's important to realize, as I've mentioned in past videos, that if the road is so hazardous that a human shouldn't be driving on that road, then a self-driving car probably shouldn't be driving on that road. So really a lot of these extreme cases that people bring up probably aren't really even an issue because no car should be driving in that particular weather at all. One last topic that I'd like to address revolved around Andre really giving a little bit of insight into how far Tesla is away from a truly driverless car that doesn't need driver input. When referencing some driving examples, he said, it is actually fairly routine for us to have zero intervention drives, I would say, in sparsely populated areas like Palo Alto. Then he added, I would say we definitely struggle a lot more in very adversarial environments like San Francisco. A lot of people working on autonomy, of course, know all about that. So really to wrap all this up, as Andre concluded in his presentation, I also believe that when it comes to their singular focus on camera vision and their ditching of radar, that they are, to borrow Andre's words, barking up the right tree. And I believe they're going to be successful in their efforts. Thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. If you did like the video, please consider clicking that like button. Also, if you're not yet subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing so you'll know when new content is published. And if you really want to be notified by YouTube when that content is published, if you click the little bell icon, that'll happen. I'd also like to take a moment to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other great supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the description below. Thank you so much.